Today, on the Comic Book Report, I'll be doing an unboxing video for the Amazing Spider-Man Omnibus Volume 5. Stick around and check it out. Greetings, true believers. My name is Dominic, and you are watching the Comic Book Report, where we review comic books and graphic novels so you can get an idea of what to read. As I mentioned, I'll be doing an unboxing for The Amazing Spider-Man Omnibus Volume 5 by Jerry Conway, Len Wein, and Ross Andrew. And even though some of these issues are pushing almost 50 years old, I do want to give a general spoiler warning. I will be flipping through the contents of this book and may be commenting on plot points. You've been warned. Now, let's go ahead and get to that unboxing. All right, and here's the box itself. Now, while I go ahead and start breaking into it, something I noticed immediately was that this box was a whole lot bigger than I expected for an 800-page omnibus. I'd like to mention at this time that this omnibus I purchased online from organicpricedbooks.com. I should say this is my first purchase using this seller. I heard about it from a couple other comic book YouTubers lately, and I decided to browse their selection, and I found a very competitive price point for this book. As you can see, this box was oversized because it was actually a box within a box. Wow, I cannot fault them for this shipping. The handling and packaging is wonderful. And here is the Omnibus itself. It collects The Amazing Spider-Man issues 143 through 180, as well as The Amazing Spider-Man Annual number 10 and 11 and Nova 12. You might see some descriptions that mention a couple other bonuses, but these are the only real issues with the cover galleries, essays, sketches, and other bonus materials near the back of the book, which you'll see at the end. As far as Under the Dust Jacket goes, it looks very similar to some of the other omnibuses that have come out, except for, of course, the Spine, which I'll touch on in a moment. Before I go ahead and flip through the collection for you all, I'm going to go ahead and stretch out the Spine. Again, I've seen this done on a couple other channels that seem to claim this is good for the binding, kind of breaks it in. I don't know, but hey, why risk it, right? I'd also like to note, I got the standard edition cover. There is a variant cover that I believe is for direct market. I'll go ahead and put a picture up as well. But what can I say? I like that standard edition cover. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the spine. There it is for the new edition right here. There has been a lot of turmoil online. I see some people ordering custom dust jackets from third parties. All because Marvel's new Omnibus for some of these Silver Age Omnis have this new format with the smaller printing and a little photo at the bottom and it simply doesn't match their older stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and do a comparison with Omnibus Volume 2 from one of the older printings I have. As you can see, there's quite a difference here, and as a collector, I completely understand the dismay, but at the end of the day, as in life, it is what is on the inside that counts. Diving in now, you can see much of the early pages are very similar to what you'll see in older Omnis. You've got some cover page, the bibliography, book history, publication information. A wonderful table of contents, as always, that lays out these issues with their titles and the respective months they were released, which I love. And, of course, an introduction by one of the creatives before diving into the meat of the issues themselves. Right from the get-go, I will say some of these newer printings I've seen as well, unlike the original, original printings of some of these early Silver Age Omnis, you'll notice they're slimmer, even though they're 800 pages like the earlier volumes, but it looks like the paper stock is just a little bit thinner, that's why the volumes are slimmer. Uh, this isn't a huge issue for me, they're still very sturdy pages, uh, semi-gloss, which I like, uh, really, the art just pops. Um, I don't see a ton of image bleed through, um, but just as a heads up, the paper is thinner than some of the, like, you know, Omnibus Volume 1 first printings, things like that. Anyway, wow, I just gotta say, I'm so excited to have this Omnibus in my hands. I believe it's the first Volume 5 of these Marvel Omnibuses that have ever been released. Um, other than Conan or some of the non-superhero titles there. And five volumes is such a big deal. If you've collected all five, you have the first 180 plus annual issues of The Amazing Spider-Man, and that's a substantial chunk of the run. I've missed a few of the volumes myself, but I'm hoping to catch them later on reprints. That being said, this volume is 
particularly exciting for me because I first got into some of these comics reading the old Marvel Essentials line, which was a black and white reprint on really horrible, like, dollar store coloring book paper. We're talking, like, butcher paper. Each volume of those would collect about 20 issues, similar to your Marvel Epic collections these days. But again, horrible production, black and white and not ideal for really any reason other than wanting to read the stories themselves very cheaply. If I was getting into comics these days and I wanted to go ahead and read a lot of the early stories for a cheaper price point, I probably would have invested in something like Marvel Unlimited for a month or two just to read them digitally. Anyway, when I was reading through the Marvel Essential line for Spider-Man, I got about through the end of Omnibus 4. So Omnibus 5 for me is more or less new territory. There's a handful of these issues I have never read. Other than, of course, the original Clone Saga arc, I used to have the trade paperback. You can see a picture of it here. But I ended up selling it during my comics hiatus where I got rid of a good handful of my collection. So I'm really excited to read these issues again, as well as some that I've never read before. At a glance, I cannot begin to say how eager I am to dive into that original clone saga again. To see the Jackal come up with all of his devious plans. The return of Gwen Stacy? A clone of Spider-Man? Who knows? <laughs> you gotta have to find out by reading yourself. Making my way through the collection as well, I love to see classic villains like Doc Ock, the Sandman, the Vulture, as well as others like the Shocker, Will of Wisp, and of course characters like the Punisher. I know it's not the Stan Lee run, but this still feels like vintage, classic, amazing Spider-Man to me. And a highlight I know I'm looking forward to is the blossoming relationship between Peter Parker and Mary Jane Watson. And of course, I can't neglect to mention the new Green Goblin. I think it's very safe to say I have some good reading ahead of me. Before we start skimming a bit faster through this collection, we should note the crossover with Nova, which is quite a fun addition. We even get Nova, I think 12, as I mentioned earlier. And frankly, it's a welcome addition. I am so thankful to Marvel Comics for releasing a Volume 5 of The Amazing Spider-Man, and all I can do is hope that they keep churning these things out year after year. For my money, the Marvel Omnibus line never disappoints, and even with minor quibbles over the spines, the content within is just golden. If you're on the fence about purchasing this collection, I sincerely hope this video gives you a better idea of what you can expect from this purchase. And if you'd like a full review of this collection, let me know in the comments, and I might go ahead and make one after I finish reading. And that's going to wrap up this quick unboxing, where you got to see a good overview of some of the issues included, as well as the bonus content here at the end. And as for the bonus content here itself, I really enjoyed seeing the covers of the reprints, as well as the handful of original sketches. What a treat! The Amazing Spider-Man Omnibus Volume 5 is a welcome addition that I'll proudly put on my bookshelf, even if that spine is a little less than ideal. And as always, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this and would like to see other comic content, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button, or feel free to watch some of my other videos. Until next time, have a great week.